To God be the glory. I bless each and every one of you because you're the blessedness of the Father. And I just want to honor the Lord for each and every one of you at the same time. To God be the glory. So today, I just wanted to share something really short uh, with each and every one of us. Because a lot of you, you're going through something at this particular moment. But you don't understand what the root of it is. And I want to speak from my own personal journey. Um, and this will basically be an enlightenment for somebody out there. I remember I was sharing concerning, you know, a lot of us who go to the barber shop. Yeah, and uh, who go to get our hair done. <laughs> I believe I shared that prophetic word. And I was helping us to understand that we have to be what? We have to be careful of where we go to get our hair done. And the reason why I share that is because, you know, for some of us, you know, they, because some of these people that we basically take our hair to, they are, they've probably gone and made covenants, you know, with idols and things like that. And when we place our hair, and you know, in that dimension, some people they cut their your hair and they go and use it to find out who you are. And what eventually happens? They take that hair and they use it for all manner of things, you know. And from that dimension, I remember, you know, somebody where I used to go and get my hair uh, 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 cut from. And what happened was the person was using my hair for all ritualistic purposes, you know. And the Lord began to show me that there was somebody who basically used to cut your hair. And every time they cut your hair, you will look old. <laughs> and, you know, it was an exchange where you are always looking old because of them cutting your hair. And for that reason, you know, the Lord was like, hey, you need to stop cutting your hair at that place. And I basically had to abstain from that, you know, and that is why I basically released that word, because the Lord is releasing majority of you from that what? From that sickness in itself. Because for some of you, you're so loyal to your barbers, you're so loyal to your hairdressers, because even someone around me as well, they used to go and get their hair done, you know, with a certain hairdresser. And the person would take a strand of the hair and then go and use it to manifest mind control. You know, perhaps maybe never to leave that salon to always keep coming back. Can you see? Because some people will go through any extent to retain customers. Do you see that? So that's why majority of us, because we are ignorant of the devices of the wicked, that is why we continue to fall prey onto all of these things. To God be the glory. And the Lord is restoring the dimension of your immortality. I believe the reason why I shared about immortality is because I released a word concerning what? Concerning immortality. And I shared that Jesus is what? Is the manifestation of life. Because the Bible says in John 11, I am the resurrection and I am life. Amen. Now, continuing in that in itself, According to Acts chapter 2, we understand that Holy Ghost is immortality, the new wine. So, Apostle Paul came to bring the gospel of what? Life and immortality. The gospel of Jesus and of Holy Ghost, the new wine. And on the basis of that is why I basically released that word, life and immortality uh, uh, video. I, be I believe I will attach it here for majority of us to watch, you know, when you're uh, uh, in a convenient position to do so. And for that, I also shared that the Lord wants to restore your immortal essence because I was speaking about your youth being renewed. Yeah, I was speaking about youth being renewed because the Lord is restoring a lot of youths and restoring youths, your youthful essence and restoring it back to you. And the dimension of that was helping you to understand that you do not die. Because religion has continued to teach us that you are going to grow old, you are going to grow old, wrinkles and all of that. But in Christ Jesus, it says, as he is, so are you. That is why you can read the scripture that says that some of you here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming back. Which means there are some people who are still on earth and they are what? They are still here since the days of Jesus Christ. And how do they look? Do you know? No, you don't. Because you know why? Just in the same way what I'm about to teach here today or help us to understand today is what they would have done to those people. Because if they found out that, wow, Mr. John has been here since the time of Jesus, let's call the FBI. 
<laughs> they call the FBI. And what happened after they call the FBI? The FBI comes. They take Mr. John. They take him into the lab. They begin to what? They begin to test his cells. They begin to test this. They begin to test that until they kill Mr. John. <laughs> so it is not It is not basically the word of Christ that basically brought him to an end. It's the testings that they've done on Mr. John to find out how long he has been here on earth that brought him to an end. Do you see that in itself? So this is where majority of us, because of who we are in Christ, some people, they have basically gone and covenanted themselves with the life that you are. So that is why you can see some people, you know, some, not all the time, there is always a reason why that is, but I'm showing you a root of it. And one of the roots to that in itself is that some of you, the reason why you might perhaps be looking old is because somebody has gone and covenanted life for life, your life in exchange for theirs. Do you see that dimension? Your life in exchange for theirs. It's in the scripture and I'm going to show you that today. So I'm going to share this with uh, my testimony because I believe I just want to share this with absolute love. Do you see that? I want to share this with absolute love. Let's see from the book of 1 Kings and chapter 20, which I believe I've shared here before. Because some of you, you're going through sicknesses. You're going through things that you cannot explain. But the Lord wants to show you the roots of this in itself. And the reason why he wants to show you the roots is so that you can be what? Set free. It says, if the sun sets you free, you are what? You are free indeed. Do you see that? It says, if the sun sets you free, if the sun sets you free, you're what? You are free indeed. So now let's look at this dimension. I want us to go to the book of first Kings and what? And chapter 20. Right. So this is what he says. So I'm going to start from verse one. Now Ben Hadad, king of Aram, mustered his entire army, accompanied by 32 kings with their horses and chariots. He went up and besieged Samaria and attacked it. He sent messengers into the city to Ahab, king of Israel, saying, this is what Ben Hadad says, your silver and gold are mine and the best of your wives and children are mine. The king of Israel answered, just as you say, my lord, the king, I and all I have are yours. The messengers came again and said, this is what Ben Hadad says. I sent to demand your silver and gold, your wives and your children. But about this time tomorrow, I'm going to send my officials to search your palace and houses of your officials. They will seize everything you value and carry it away. The king of Israel summoned all the elders of the land and said to them, see how this man is looking for trouble. When he sent for my wives and my children, my silver, my gold, I did not refuse him. The elders and the people all answered, do not listen to him or agree to his demands. So you can see, do not agree to his demands. So now what happened from that in itself? I'm just going to summarize it because a lot of you can go through the scripture. I, like I say, I put the scriptures in the description box. Have a look at it and you can go through it to examine for yourself in itself. Amen. So you can see. From that instruction and what? And Ahab refusing, Ben Hadad decided, I am going to what? Destroy the city. So what happened? Meanwhile, in verse 13 of the same chapter, 1 Kings 20, the, God, the father decided to show mercy to Ahab. Meanwhile, a prophet came to Ahab, king of Israel, and announced, this is what the Lord says. Do you see this vast army? I will give it into your hand today, and then you will know that I am the Lord. But who will do this? Ahab asked. The, pro the prophet replied, this is what the Lord says. The junior officers under the provincial commanders will do it. And who will start the battle? He asked. The prophet answered, you will. So you can see, this is why I always encourage majority of the people here right that when situation arises because a lot of you when things happen you go to a prophet first you go to a, a pastor first you go to a, a teacher first an apostle first and all of those things hoping to get what a counsel from them the bible declares according to proverbs 11 and 14 the scripture says where no counsel is the people fall but in the multitude of counselors there is safety that scripture can sometimes be wrong 
Yes, just in the because it's in the Bible does not make it absolutely right. Why? Because God corrected it. Because why did he correct it? Isaiah 11, he gave us a preference. It says here that the spirit of counsel, where is the spirit of counsel? In the Father. So that means seek first the kingdom of God. For every counsel that you're asking for, go to the Lord first. And then the Lord can direct you to the person who has the word of the Lord in their mouth. So allow the Lord to guide and to lead you. Not thinking, because that person is my pastor, because that person is my apostle, because that person is my prophet, I can go to them and ask them. Because sometimes they can give you a counsel that can lead you into trouble. Let God, let Christ be your first point of contact. Let him be the one you go to first before anything. That is how you honor the Lord. Do you see that? Lord, I'm, I'm, this situation is arising. Help me to understand it. And then he will show you the path you need to take. So you can see that Ahab, rather than going to God first, like we all know Ahab, you know, is always about himself, you know, because when he wanted something, rather than go to God and ask, he went and told his wife. <laughs> he, the wife eventually killed somebody, you know, Nabaoth, and then took his vineyard. In the same way here, can you see that? <laughs> he decided to ask, you know, <laughs> the elders. And we can see in another dimension, he wanted to go to war with who? With Jehoshaphat. But rather than ask, you know, the Lord, he went and began to ask the prophets. And the prophets were all saying, ah, Ahab, go to, yeah, go to war, go to war, go to war. Not knowing that the Lord had already orchestrated this to bring him to an end. So you can see, we have to be careful. Can you see that? I'm not saying don't go. I'm saying be careful. So you can see in this dimension, a prophet came because out of him, you know, making these decisions by himself, a prophet came and said, hey, Ahab, God is going to intervene in this situation. Because every time the Lord was doing this, he was trying to get Ahab reconciling him back to himself. Amen. Now, we begin to understand the attack began as the Lord basically said it. But this is what eventually happened. In the end of it, you know, because the Lord wanted to bring ben Haddad to an end. Do you see that? He wanted to bring ben Haddad to an end because they had been terrorizing Samaria for a long time. So the Lord was like, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to give this man into the hand of Ahab for Ahab to do what needs to be done. But look at what Ahab did again. <laughs> the Bible says, in verse 33 of 1 Kings chapter 20, it says, the king answered, is he still alive? Because why? ben Haddad went and put on a sackcloth and pretended. Do you see? He pretended he was mourning. <laughs> look at what he says in verse 31. It says, his officials said to him, look, we have heard that the kings of Israel are merciful. Let us go to the king of Israel with sackcloth around our waist and ropes around our head. Perhaps he will spare your life. Wearing sackcloth around their waist and ropes around their heads, they went to the king of Israel and said, Your servant ben Haddad says, Please let me live. The king answered, Is he still alive? He is my brother. The men took this as a good sign and were quick to pick up his word. Yes, your brother ben Haddad, they said. <laughs> they picked up his word. <laughs> yes, your brother Ben Haddad, they said, go and get him, the king said. When Ben Haddad came out, Ahab had him come into his chariot. I will return the cities my father took from your father, Ben Haddad offered. You may set up your own market areas in Damascus as my father did in Samaria. Ahab said, on the basis of this treaty, I will set you free. So he made a treaty with him and let him go. Do you see that dimension? The Lord is asking you to leave that relationship, but you made a treaty, you got married. The Lord is saying you need to leave that job, you made a treaty, you were promoted. The Lord is saying you need to leave that what? Ministry, you made a treaty, you accepted the offer of the pastor and of the leader. Can you see that? And you let them go because the Lord was about to bring judgment on those situations. But you, by signing a treaty, you basically covenanted life for life. And when I talked about relationship, I'm not talking about marriage. <laughs> no, not at all. So don't get excited and saying, hey, the Lord is telling me to leave this marriage. No, I did not say that. I said a relationship, which the Lord has not ordained, which means you're not yet married. You're in a relationship that the Lord has said, let that man go. Let that woman go. So, do you see that in itself? They made a treaty and then he let him go because God wanted to bring that to an end completely so that they can have peace, but they went and made a treaty. And on the basis of that, look at what Ben Haddad did. He pretended, 
So how many people are pretending to be your friend? Like I said, the barber, the hairdresser, they pretended that they are good, but what they were doing behind the scene was completely evil. Do you see? They know that you are merciful. That's why I said to some of you, you are so nice. You are so good. You are so kind. You are so compassionate that people use that in itself as a weakness against you. Do you see that? They said because they've heard that the kings of Israel, they were merciful. They used the mercy as the sign of weakness to invade and then receive restoration. Do you see that? So sometimes the Lord can say, hey, let that relationship go. Oh, I remember when that person was there for me. <laughs> they were there for me many years ago. Yeah, they, they were there for me. When I was down, they were there for me. Ah, leave that job. Oh, the boss. When, when, when I couldn't pay my rent, he gave me advance. When I needed him the most, he came through. Leave that woman alone. Oh, she was so kind to me. Remember when I, when I didn't have anything to eat, she would bring me dinner every single time. Do you see that in itself? Not realizing there was something behind it. And that is why the Bible tells us not to repay evil with evil. But we should repay evil with blessings. Do you see that in itself? Because you're the dimension of love. So that is why I always encourage majority of you. Because you love that person does not need, mean that you have to relate with them. Because you are so compassionate with people does not mean you have to be friends with people. That's why the Bible tells you, I have placed a boundary lines for you in favorable places. Can you see that? So that's why the Lord places boundaries. That's the beauty of it. Can you see with Ahab? Can you see how they pretended? They said he wore sackcloth. He said the kings were merciful. He said they would spare your life. And what happened? He used that against Ahab and his life was spared and even made a treaty. I will give you this. I will give you that. So how many people have made promises to you? And you have stayed on because of that promise. If you stay on, we'll, we'll, I will do this for you. The Lord has been calling you, get out. But you are saying, if I stay on, I will do this for you. If I stay on, I, I, will, I, you know, I will do that. And you stayed on because of the promise they made. I will change. <laughs> I, I promise I will change. You know, just, just continue this relationship. I will change. I will do all that I can. But no, the Lord already knows. He sees the end from the beginning. Now, look at what the Bible now declares. It says in verse 37, according in 1 Kings 20, the prophet found another man and said, strike me, please. So the man struck him and wounded him. Then the prophet went and stood by the road waiting for the king. He disguised himself with his headband down over his eyes. As the king passed by, the prophet called out to him, your servant went into a thick of the battle. And someone came to me with a captive and said, guard this man. If he's missing, it will be life for life or you must pay a talent of, for, of silver. While your servant was busy here and there, the man disappeared. That is your sentence, the king of Israel said. You have pronounced it yourself. Then the prophet quickly removed the headband from his eyes, and the king of Israel recognized him as one of the prophets. He said to the king, this is what the Lord says, you have set free a man I had determined should die. Therefore, it is your life for his life, your people for his people. Amen. Now, this is where I want to share my own testimony because I have shared it here before, you know, and I want to share because for a lot of you, the reason why you're going through what you're going through, some of you, you know, is sickness. Some of you, you know, is like things are just not working out the way it ought to work out. That is because some of you have gone and covenanted life for life with people that you did not understand. They were not for you. Can you see in the book of Joshua chapter nine? The Bible says that they came to Joshua, pretended, just in the same way Ben Hadad pretended to who? To Ahab. The Gideonites, the Gibeonites, sorry, they basically they basically came to Gideon on the on, sorry to, to Joshua, pretending that they were from far away. And because you see that? Ahab did not inquire of the Lord, because Joshua did not inquire of the Lord, he made a vow with them that he could not what? he could not release himself from. Do you see that in itself? And then eventually, they were now fighting battles they ought not to fight. So you can see, when God tells you to stay away, you begin to fight battles that you're fighting battles over your health. It's not a battle over your health. No, not at all. It has never been a battle over your health because he says that what? You will prosper in health as your soul is prospering. But it's because of a covenant that was done somewhere. 
I'm helping somebody to understand because for majority of you, it might not be in this dimension, but you're understanding what I am speaking. So you can see, because for my testimony, I want to share it from this dimension. So I've shared with each and every one of us, and this is a, I'm sharing it again, and I'm just sharing this with absolute love. Because I remember when I was in a union with somebody, you know, who abandoned and left, the Lord basically was telling me before I went into that union, with this person, I don't want you to go into that union. No, not at all. But I was not paying attention to the Lord. I was not listening to what the Lord was saying because, you know, my relationship with the Lord, I thought I knew God, but <laughs> I realized now that then I did not know him at all. I am still getting to know him. So it's a place where, you know, in that dimension, the Lord was saying, no, don't go into that relationship. No, I don't want you to. For every sign, it was a no, 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 no. But I did not listen to the father. No, not at all. So I went into that relationship. And after the union was blessed in itself, you know, it was not legal. It was just blessed. I was helping to understand that the Lord began to show me. He said, this person, I was about to take their life. And I'm like, really? He said, yes. He said, remember the day they were in the car and they were driving, they were praying? He said, yes. He said, that was the day that they were ready to go. But you intervened. <laughs> Why? Because the mother of that person was into witchcraft. She's in the marine kingdom. The father is into occult, is in the occultic. So you can see that the Lord was about to bring some things to an end because he was bringing justice into that family because of what? The wickedness they had always been doing. So you can see, like I said, the children might be innocent of this. They might not know, you know, in itself, but because of the parents. So it's a place where what eventually happened, not listening to the Lord, I went into union and the Lord now began to say, you know, I'm talking about the restoration of what? Immortal essence. He said, when you went into union with them, do you know what happened? He says, you gave up your immortal essence and now they have covenanted because of the life for life exchange. Now they have covenanted with your immortal essence. So that is why you're experiencing what you're experiencing because the mother went to a witch doctor and gone and done the exchange of life for a life. Do you see that covenant? So it was a place where I had to repent because I gave that up, you know, in ignorance, not realizing that it was giving it up because of what the mother had gone and done. Because the mother did not like me. The father did not like me because the father was trying to offer me up as a sacrifice to his cult. The mother did not like me. That's why she was expecting that once the covenant was done and sealed, do you know what will happen? I will eventually die. The daughter will become wealthy and she will continue to look younger and continue to prosper. Do you see that dimension? I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, uh, the movie. Uh, 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 I, I remember this animated movie. Tangled. Yeah. So in the movie Tangled, what happened? The witch basically kidnapped the daughter. And then what happened? Every time the daughter sang, the witch will look younger. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? So that is the covenant, you know, just like that in itself is the covenant she went and took out to transfer my inheritance, the immortal essence. So basically she transferred all the sickness of the children <laughs> upon my life <laughs> so that they will become well and I will continue to grow sick and eventually die. Do you see the very wickedness the mother is involved in? And, you know, and that in itself is my own disobedience because the Lord warned me, but I did not listen to the Lord. So you can begin to understand that majority of you, this is the reason why he has been calling you out because you don't know what is behind the scene. So it was until the daughter abandoned and left, the Lord now began to show me what the mother actually went and done and is still doing. You can see that in itself because the Lord has, you know, the Lord in his infinite mercy had to bring me out of that. <laughs> Do you see that? And he allowed the daughter to abandon in itself, to walk away from it. And that was the freedom the Lord was giving me. So you can begin to understand the very dimension of majority of you as well. Because some of you, some people have gone to covenant your life without you even knowing. 
you can see that dimension they've gone and done it without you knowing and it was an exchange for life for life so that is why some people when they've done what they've done they will tell you please pray for me please pray for me and that was what the mother was doing you know it would be a place pray for me you know <laughs> pray and the lord would be like don't do it you know and at some point the lord would say yeah don't don't worry you just do it you you pray for her because you're sowing a seed of love so in the place of that in itself it was a seed of love so that is why I was helping majority of you. Do not repay evil with evil, but repay evil with blessing. So that in all itself, the Lord was allowing me to sow seed of love, you know, in the family, with the father, with the mother, with the children, I sow the seed of love. And eventually when the daughter abandoned, the Lord said, now that's it. Do you see that dimension? So the love of the father is now basically manifesting in my life to reconcile all things back to myself. Do you see why Ephesians chapter 5 tells us? Because majority of us, we might not understand that scripture in full entirety, but I'm helping you so that you can, what? You can understand what the Lord is speaking to you. It says, for you were once darkness. Can you see? So by being in that place, it was darkness. It says, but now you are light because I came out in the Lord. It says, now live as children of light for the fruit of the light consists of in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. It says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. So it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. So you can see the whole entirety of the journey in which I'm sharing with you. Because what happened, it was through the marriage, she began to what? Through the blessing of the marriage that she began to what? She began to, you know, allow. she began to use the covenant to manifest whatever she was manifesting. But to God be the glory, because the marriage was not legal. So that was, <laughs> that's why I always say that he will always give you a way of escape. So while I was wondering, Lord, why am I not able to legalize it? He said, now you understand why I did not allow you to be able to legalize it. Because of what the mother and the father was doing behind the scene. Because they tried in every way to have that legalized, but the Lord blocked that route. So you can begin to understand it. The Lord blocked it because of what the mother was doing, because of what the father was doing. So it's a place that majority of you, there are things that are happening behind the scene and it's shining his light on it. Because for what you're going through, it is not the Lord. It is somebody who has gone and done something and it is covenanting life for life. And it is with an expectation that when you come to an end, they are able to go and, you know, they're going to be able to prosper. So you can see that is why sometimes it is not the Lord who has stopped that person from having children. It is somebody who has gone and done something. Just like I shared here, that that person, the mother, went to a witch doctor and the witch doctor decided to covenant that person's life also that they are not able to give birth. That when they give birth, the witch doctor dies because he has also covenanted his life <laughs> with, <laughs> with hers. Do you see that dimension? That, you know, if he ever gives birth, that he will die, but he doesn't want to die. So he will have to do everything to stop that from happening. So you can see the dimension of wickedness that is manifesting through that in itself. So majority of you, it's not because you cannot have children, but somebody has determined that while you are basically toiling, they are reaping the rewards of it. Do you see that in itself? It's in the scriptures. The Bible says you have reaped where you have not sown. Others have done the work, but you are reaping the rewards of their labor. And this is where you begin to see that dimension begin to manifest. So you are doing the work, but they are reaping the rewards of it. Do you see? You go to work nine to five. You can't explain how the finances just ended after you got paid. They are reaping the rewards. And this is where the Lord wants to set. That's why he's saying, if the Lord says, if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. So for some of you, it is the ignorance in what? In what you did. For me, it was so I had to acknowledge, yes, Lord, I went into that marriage and it was through that marriage. The immortal essence was stolen. Life was exchanged and all of that. I acknowledged it before the Lord. Lord, I am so sorry. And in that, he began to forgive. So he was showing what, you know, what was happening and then eventually began to release me from the covenant that the woman made. Do you see that in itself? 
because I could have died. But the Lord was merciful. Just like the prophets came to Ahab, the Lord basically showed mercy. So in that in itself, I want to show you mercy. So can we just say this prayer together? Just a simple short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, anywhere that I've been disobedient to you, for this covenant to manifest in my life, I repent of the disobedience. I repent of the covenant. Anywhere that I've participated in this, I repent of it. Every reward that I've been given concerning it, I repent of the rewards. I renounce the agreements. I renounce the life that I've given away. And I restore that to myself. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The reason why I restored that life is because the Bible says, if you enter into a house and you speak peace and it is not received, shake the dust off your feet and your peace is returned to you. So this is where you begin to understand. So everywhere you have sold love, everywhere you have sold life, and it is not of the Lord, once you've repented of it, reconcile it back to yourself. Father, I reconcile that life. It was not received. I reconcile it back to myself. Do you see the dimension of it? So majority of you, this is where the Lord is helping you to understand. the immort Because he says, I want to restore your youth like that of an ego. And the reason why the youth cannot be restored is because of the covenant they made. So now you can see how the Lord is now basically restoring that in itself. That's what she did. That's what somebody did to you. And that is what is being restored unto you. So I want to release this to the glory of the Lord. And I bless you with the mercy of God. And I bless you with life. In Jesus' mighty name. You will not die, but live. You will not die, but live. You will not die, but live. You will live to declare the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. Nobody can take that testimony away from you. Nobody. That's why the Bible tells us the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So I just released this over you just to help you to understand. For majority of you, this might probably be, it might probably be a worse scenario, but the Lord has already orchestrated it. For some of you, it might be a direction for you to understand. I need to seek the Lord concerning this and it will give you a way out. So I bless you with this in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that the Lord continue to be with you and uphold you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you all. Blessings.